Cruise travel is just not as simple as it used to be. I don't remember taking anything but maybe a camera on my very first cruise, but now we have a lot of tech that we take with us, and that's what we're going to talk about today on Cruise Tech. Welcome to Cruise Tech Reviews, where we test and review various products designed to make your cruise travel safer, easier, and more enjoyable. Today we're going to talk about all the different stuff that we carry with us when we go on a cruise. I've tried to divide this into two sections to make it a little easier because some of the stuff that we take with us, it's only because we have a YouTube channel and it deals with vlogging and video and all that. And I, I know most people probably don't need to take this stuff with them. So I'll talk about that in the second section of this video. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, hang around, and I'll make sure to go through all those items as well. But I'm going to start out with taking things that we take with us regardless. Even if we weren't vlogging, even if we weren't uh, didn't have a YouTube channel, these are things we would take with us and that I think everybody should take with them on a cruise. I'm just going to go through these things one by one, and as I talk about each one, I'm actually going to put them down here next to me in a box because we're getting ready to pack up for a cruise in just a few days, so we've got to have all this stuff organized anyway. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is my cell phone. Now, I do take a cell phone. Uh, obviously, we do shoot a lot of photos and video with my iPhone, and I'm sure you do too. Most people today travel with some sort of a smartphone. The next thing is some flashlight. Now, this is not the best one. This is just one I had in front of me. Uh, it's a pretty bright LED light, as you can see, and you need some kind of a light just in case of an emergency on board the ship, or let's say you need to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. Maybe the ship you're on doesn't have lighting, so you can find your way to the uh, bathroom if you need to or wherever. Uh, it's also, now we have been on ships that lost power. We were on a river ship one time, lost power in the middle of the night. There were no lights. And that lasted for maybe 20 minutes. The ship just kind of floated through the river. It was a little, little scary. They did finally get it fixed. Nothing bad happened. But we had a flashlight with us. And there are better ones than this. I'll put a link in the description of this video to all of these things. So you don't need to worry about that. Just enjoy the video. Just look in the description. You'll find links to all the things I recommend. Another light that's a good idea, and we just started doing this about a year ago, is this little night light. And this is a great thing. You just basically plug it in. The, I, we put it in the bathroom and it has a photo sensor. So when all the lights are out, it puts out a nice, it's low enough where it's not hard on your eyes and it's not going to wake anybody up if somebody's still sleeping in the room. It's just a great little night light. I think these come four to a pack on Amazon. They're very inexpensive. We take them on every cruise now. We take two of them just in case, but uh, you can get by fine with one. And then we also use them around the house. Now, this will be the first cruise where I'm taking this item. I found this online uh, on Amazon. It is a little portable thermostat or thermometer actually it just lets you know the temperature in the room and the reason I'm doing this it also gives you the humidity is because a lot of the thermostats on cruise ships they don't actually show you the temperature they'll just have four or five different marks maybe four blue four red you don't really know what the temperature is this also has a little magnet so it'll stick right on the wall we're planning on just sticking this right next to the thermostat so we know exactly what the room temperature is now of course we have to charge things we have to charge cameras we have to charge cell phones we have to charge computers and i do take my laptop with me i'm using it it's over here off screen right now because i'm using it for this video but i do take my macbook pro 16 inch macbook pro with me Part of that's because I do vlog and blog from the ship, and I go through all my photos and videos, but uh, I would also use it for email if I needed to. And we also take an iPad. I don't have that pictured here either. Ricky takes an iPad because she likes to read. She reads a lot of books on cruises. Uh, but So you're going to need cables, and we're taking all the different cables we need, USB-C to USB-C, uh, USB-A to USB-C, 
and some USB-A to micro USB. We still have a couple of things that use the little micro USB. I wish we didn't, but they do. And they are, you know, we just take several of these. We probably take eight or ten cables with us. We also take what I call the triple threat. Let me throw those in there. And this is a USB-A cable, which is your standard USB. This is what you're going to find on almost all cruise ships now are the USB-A ports. Some of the newer ships have USB-C, which is kind of becoming the new standard. But this has USB-A and it has three USB-C ports. So you can charge up to three things with this one cable. I love this cable. Now, when we talk about charging, a lot of times on most cruise ships, you're going to have European style ports or outlets on the ship in your stateroom. You may also have some US style 110 outlets. Those European outlets are going to be 220. But that's okay because most of the items that you will be charging, like your computer, your cell phone, your cameras, almost every item nowadays will accept anywhere from 110 volts all the way up to say 240 volts. So it won't hurt those items. You can always check on the transformer or the thing you plug into the wall and it will usually tell you the voltage range just to be safe. Where you really run into problems with 220 is if you try to plug in something like a power strip. You should never do that. Do ne never plug in a power strip. I've done that in European hotels and have blow out the whole the whole room shuts off, all the electricity shuts off. Also things that, that heat up like hair dryers, kettles, things like that you don't want to take with you. If you are going to use a kettle on a cruise to heat up water, ask your room steward. They'll probably have one that's designed for 220 and they'll should bring that to the room and provide it for you. But if you do need to charge other things that use 110 US style plugs, I love these things. This is a Euro style plug adapter. You plug it into the European outlet and it gives you, this one gives you four, one, two, three, four US style. And then you also get three USB-A ports as well. So you can charge four five, six, seven different items just from this one outlet on the cruise ship. These are great. Again, Amazon. They make another style that's very similar. Uh, I think I bought these before they had these out. This one only has one US style plug and two USB ports. So I'll put links to both of these, but you know, this is probably the best one to go with. European style adapters. Now, this does not convert the power from 220 to 110. It's only giving you the plug. It's only adapting the plug style. So you'll still still be getting 220 voltage through this outlet. But like I say, most of the items that you're going to be charging are going to be okay with that. Here's another adapter. This is actually a US plug adapter that goes to three USB ports, USB-A ports. Uh, so just one more option. We always have it with us just in case we need it. The next thing is a USB-C thumb drive. I'm sorry, USB thumb drive. Uh, I actually have USB-C because my computer only has USB-C. Now this is a USB-A thumb drive, but I have adapters. I can always go from a C to an A if I need to. We've been on cruises where we need to get something off of my computer and take it to the front desk and have it printed out. And sometimes they'll use a thumb, they'll, they'll say, if you put it on a thumb drive and bring it to us, we'll print it out for you. So I always carry a thumb drive. Maybe it's a boarding pass from an airline or something like that for the flight home. And many times we've just copied those PDF files over to a thumb drive, take them to the front desk and they'll print them out for us. Next is if you're traveling with a digital camera, and some people still do, they don't just use their cell phones, they'll use a digital camera. And those have memory cards. We always carry extra memory cards with us. You can see I've got, this one's full up. I've got 12 of them in here. And I also have the little micro SD cards. So I always carry extras just in case a memory card goes bad. 
It never hurts to have extras. I just take this because it's simple and easy to pack. Next, a microfiber cloth. Now, you can use this for cleaning your sunglasses. You can use it for cleaning your glasses if you wear glasses. I primarily use it for camera lenses or to clean the lens on your cell phone before you start taking pictures. If you're getting blurry pictures, a lot of times it's because you got fingerprints or something on your lens. You can also use it to clean the uh, front glass of your, of your uh, uh, cell phone or your screen on your laptop if you have a laptop or iPad with you. Always good to have a couple of these little portable microfiber glass cleaning cloths. Now this may seem a little strange, but it is a pair of tweezers. And it came, this one came in a little case. I like that. Now you may wonder, why would you need a pair of tweezers? Well, I'll tell you why I take it. I use a GoPro camera sometimes. And the GoPro, you have to remove the little micro SD card to put it in the computer to get the files off of it. And it's almost impossible to get with your fingers. So I actually use the tweezers for that. But I'm sure there's a lot of other things you could use a pair of tweezers for if you had them. So it doesn't hurt to have a pair of tweezers with you. Now, we carry a tape measure. I take this 16-foot tape measure. I debated whether to put this in the everything category because we always like to measure the balcony, measure the stateroom, and then we'll report back to you in our review what the dimensions are of the stateroom. We'll also measure the TV, the diagonal on the television, so you know that. So we always carry a little this one's actually bigger than you need. You could probably get by with a 12 foot, but we do carry a tape measure with us. Not sure everybody really needs this. Okay, one of my favorite things that we only started using a few years ago, and that are that is these little magnets. They're so strong, they're hard to get apart even in the box. They come four to a box. You may not know this, but the walls in your stateroom on a cruise ship are metal. Uh, so these will stick to the walls, and they are super, super strong. You can put this on the wall. You can hang caps. You can hang a jacket. You can hang a sweater. We're always looking for more hooks. Some cruise ships are pretty good. They'll put a couple, maybe three hooks in the room, but we use more than that. We put all kinds of lanyards. We'll hang our cameras up on it. So these little hooks, I think they come, I know they come four to a box. They're not very expensive, and you will be amazed how much you will use these little magnetic hooks. And like I say, they are super strong. Okay, let's talk about Ziploc bags. We have always taken multiple, both one gallon and one quart size Ziploc bags. I only have two here, but we usually take about three or four of each because you just never know when you're going to need them. These things are great for a lot of different things. Number one, we'll pack liquids in them if we're bringing anything home that's liquid so that they're leak-proof. And they also are good for covering up your camera in the rain. If you have your camera on a neck strap, you can cut a little slit into here and slip it down over that neck strap and it'll slide down over the camera and it will keep rain and water off your camera or off your cell phone. And uh, they're just very, very handy. They're cheap, and it's a good thing to have. Now, since I did my last video, we found something even better. Actually, we saw it on another YouTube video. We're still going to take the regular Ziplocs, but these are some silicone Ziplocs, and these are like a much more sturdy. They're much more durable. They are probably a little more leak-proof. It looks to me like they have actually a double seal on the, on the little seal. This one's a small one, so we could put, you could put little cosmetics and things in here. Here's one that's a little bit larger. Uh, just name it, whatever you want to put in here that's liquid that you don't want to run the risk of having leak out in your luggage, either your hand luggage or your checked luggage. And then the largest one, I would say, is similar to the one-gallon size Ziploc. And, and I like the fact that they're color-coded. I think that's kind of cool. But this, you know, you could hold a big can of hairspray or whatever it is you pack and carry with you. We're going to be using these. I may even pack some of my camera gear in these just because I like the feel of them. They feel very well made. 
and I'm looking forward to using this. This will be a first cruise where we've used these, but I think I'm going to like these. Now, the last thing I'll mention is something that everybody should have with them on a cruise are these air tags. We use air tags in all of our luggage. We put it in our checked luggage, and that way, when we get to the airport, we've checked our luggage, we get on the plane, we can actually tell if our luggage was loaded onto the plane because on your iPhone, you can track where this air tag is. We have one in our checked bag, we have one in our rollerboards because you might get on the plane and they might make you check a rollerboard because maybe there's not enough room in the overhead bins. So we put one in every piece of luggage that we have. Or let's say you set the luggage down at an airport and someone came by and grabbed it. You've got the air tag, you'll be able to find it. So these things, I think you can get four of them, three or four for under $100, well worth it. There's also one called Tile. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone or you don't have Apple equipment, but we have, didn't find the tile to be as reliable. Uh, that was just our experience, but that's been several years ago. Maybe they've updated them. And put in the comments down below, if you use the tile, let me know in the comments. Okay, so that is everything we would take. Uh, might even take a little tripod just in case, even if I wasn't doing vlogging but we'll get into the camera stuff and the vlogging stuff here in just a second. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, do me a favor, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little notification bell. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, we are not monetized by YouTube. So if you're getting any real value out of this, we appreciate any support you can give us through Venmo. It is always appreciated. Now, let me tell you what we take with us because of our YouTube channel. And there's a lot more stuff, so it's about twice as much stuff total. But some of this stuff you could take even if you're not a YouTuber or a vlogger uh, because you just may be an enthusiast. You may want to get more video, more capture more of your vacation so that you can share it with friends. So we'll talk about that. The first thing I have is an Insta360 Ace Pro camera. Now this is replacing my GoPro. I'm using this. If I ever did need to get any shots underwater, uh, I could use this uh, Ace Pro just like I would a GoPro. I have kind of I'm switching over from GoPro to the Insta360. I'm also an Insta360 affiliate, so if you're interested in Insta360 cameras, this is just their standard action camera, which is comparable. The way it works, it's comparable to a GoPro. It has a few features GoPro doesn't have, like the little flip-up screen, which I really like. And I will be using this on our next cruise uh, coming up in a few days. And it's the first cruise we've been on where I'll be using the Ace Pro instead of the GoPro. So make sure you check out our videos. You'll probably get to see what I'm able to do with the Ace Pro. And of course, I've got extra batteries. I've got some mounting hardware. I just bought this little case from Insta360. I keep it all in there. The next camera is I take is the Insta360 X3. Now, this is an actual 360-degree camera. If you've watched some of Gary Bembridge's videos where he's on a cruise ship and you see some of that 360, that's what he's using. We have used this a little bit in the past. We used it on Virgin Voyages, on Scarlet Lady, and we're going to be using it more and more. So this is a camera that I like for getting, especially outdoor shots. It doesn't do as well indoor. It's not as great with low light, whereas the Ace Pro is a little better with low light. But if you're wanting to get a nice balcony shot and be able to see down the side of the ship and maybe see out into the ocean, or if you're walking through a port and you want to have a 360 degree experience, it's very cool. And part of that is this, what they call an invisible selfie stick, which also comes from Insta360. And it just goes on the bottom of this camera. And this will extend out very long so that you can, and that's what you'll see Gary Bimber using, where he's got the camera way out in front of him. Now, of course, I take a spare battery for the X3 camera and a battery charger 
Uh, this is actually for the Ace Pro, but it lets me charge two batteries at the same time. It uses USB-C, so one of the cables I showed you earlier will use that to charge my batteries. Another important thing as a vlogger is to have tripods. Now, I don't have my big tripod in here. I do carry a full-size tripod that goes up to about five, five and a half feet. But I carry these small little tripods. These get down very low. Sometimes I'll use these at restaurants if I'm shooting uh, low down images of food. I also have another one here that's very flexible. I can bend it and it can go from various heights because you can kind of bend it around. It's pretty cool actually the way it works. I use this. Uh, I also have this little bitty Ulanzi tripod. These are all very inexpensive. Very, they take up very little space, but sometimes you'll find yourself needing a little tripod to set on a table, table shots, or whatever, and it's very, very handy. This is something new that I've never used on a cruise before, but it's called a monkey stick or monkey grip or I can't remember, it's monkey something. And basically, this also comes from Insta360, but look at this. This is where you screw in your little uh, tripod fitting. It's got that quarter 20 tripod fitting on each end, male and female. And you can just wrap it around anything. It just bends and holds its shape. So if I want to wrap this around a doorknob or if I want to wrap it around, I don't know, something, a restaurant or whatever, I'm going to take it with me. I never know when I'm going to need something like this uh, just to get an interesting shot, maybe something up high looking down. We'll see. If I use the monkey rod or the monkey pod or whatever they call this thing. Now we also take with us a little portable light. And this is primarily, I'll use this in the restaurants, in the venues where it's usually very, very dark. It's hard to get decent video or photos of food because it's so dark. So this light is digital. It's an LED. Let me turn it on here. Yeah, there we go. And it's it's bright enough where you could use it, you know, far away to just light me up if we're doing a little vlog in the stateroom. I've only got it set to 5% right now. And it, it also does, uh, you know, different color temperatures. So you can go from, I think, 2700 all the way up to 6000 Kelvin. And that basically is changing the whiteness or the brightness, uh, and not the brightness, but the whiteness goes from more of a yellow light to a more of a blue light or a cool white. And uh, we use this all the time. So uh, it's very, very sturdy. We've never had a problem with it. It also has these quarter 20 mounts. So if I needed to mount that to one of my little tripods, I can. Very handy little tool. Not that expensive. Really not that bad. Now, I have another light. This is the first time I'll travel with this one, but I felt like I wanted to take it. This is actually a colored LED, uh, and you can change it to virtually any color. Right now, I've got it set to blue. And this comes from Ulanzi. It also has a magnetic base. As you can see, it just sticks. So this would stick to any wall in the stateroom, which I really like. It also has a quarter 20, so I can mount it on a tripod if I need to. I think these are 30 or $40, very nice. You can change the brightness, you can change the colors, all that. And we'll take this, we might use this for a little bit of accent lighting if we're doing a vlog in the stateroom. You see I've got one up here behind my motorcycle. I've got one over here, this orange one. This is a larger version of the same thing. I have it set to orange. And so it's just a little accent light just to make the background a little more interesting. Wouldn't probably take this with us if I wasn't a vlogger. We also take some lavalier microphones. I have two of these. This is one right here. Uh, if I can talk Ricky into being on camera with me, we'll have two of these with our, and I don't show them here, but I do take the Rode Wireless Pro wireless microphones with us. And we use those uh, when we're walking around the ship, shooting video, or if we're in the stateroom doing a vlog, or if I'm doing a vlog in the stateroom, whatever. And this allows me to use a lavalier microphone. And sometimes I don't like the way, especially if I'm wearing a t-shirt, I don't like the way it clips on the shirt. This type of shirt's fine. You just clip it on here. On a t-shirt, 
it looks weird when you use a clip. So sometimes I use a little tape, and this is gaff tape, they call it. And it's just a, it's kind of a fabric tape that a lot of camera and video people use. And you can stick it to your skin, and it doesn't hurt to take it off. So I'll maybe tape the microphone to the inside of a shirt or to my chest or whatever out of sight so you don't see it. It's underneath the shirt. A lot of professionals do that. I'm not saying I'm a professional. I'm just saying I always carry a roll of this with us. This roll is a little larger than I normally carry. It's just the only one I could find today to show you on film. They make smaller rolls of this. Now this is something new that I've never used before, but this will be the first cruise where I try it out. And what it does is it, it has a strong magnet on the bottom plus a suction cup. So you already know how I'm going to use this. Let's say I put it on a balcony wall and I want to get a shot of our balcony or us sitting on the balcony. I can put my cell phone in here. This little ball head is adjustable so I can move it you know, any direction I need to to get the shot I need. So if this is sitting up on a wall like that, I could have my phone like this. I could have the phone up here like this. I can do anything I want with it and then just tighten it down. But what I like about it is it's both magnetic and has a suction cup. So even if I don't have a metal wall, like let's say I wanted to put it on the glass of a, of a car windshield, I could do that because of the suction cup. But it's got a strong magnet. As you can see, it's going to be more than enough to hold the weight of that camera. Okay, I think that's about everything. I didn't show you my big tripod, even though I didn't show it to you, and the Rode wireless mics, even though I didn't show those to you. I'll put links of all this stuff in the description of this video. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And... Uh, until I see you next time, thanks for joining me on Cruise Tech. Until I see you again, remember, smooth sailing.